yeah. Greetings, my fellow film love Southern Thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful, swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Friday, March 10th, 2017. First it got sunny, now it got cloudy. Might be some rain today in the Fort Lauderdale area, but that's okay. Well, I'm alongside a new river as usual. I like the spot. It's, uh... I'm at CJ's Java Lounge 400, Southwest First Avenue, or Southwest New River Drive in Fort Lauderdale, right along southwest of the Andrews Avenue Bridge. You should check it out. There's plenty of times on Facebook and all that, so, uh, hey, just type it in, you'll find it. <laughs> There's plenty on here in this cool little facility, Mom and Paul Place. And what's cool, one good thing about it, like, you know, there's a ferry boat, and you go in there for free, and um, it stops off right in front of the facility. So, if you want to head to the shops and get some coffee, go back and forth, it's like free of charge, always tipping's good. Always uh, throw a tip in there now and then, because they're good people, retirees, and just like to enjoy mingling with folks and so forth. Yeah, so I'm not going to go with the little two bananas, and I know there's a lawsuit happening by the, by the ACLU at the Alabama bar. Of course, Jeff Sessions allegedly breached his oath or lied under oath, lied under oath, perjury, allegedly. Uh, yeah, so, um, so we'll see how far that goes. And I like when right here, I think he did. See, assume, but have merit. Better back it up. Not uh, praising the man by any means. Just sometimes getting a little bit ridiculous. The cloak and dagger game became more of a my sandbox is bigger than yours. Amy, amy, amy. You know. <laughs> and some people still go complaining with the Trump things, Trump that. Things are getting worse. And I'm like, the tradition continues. They still got to refute it. You know what? Don't even waste your breath with all due respect. Just hate to say that. So, um, according to this, Trump's fired advisor worked as foreign agent. First he resigned, now he's fired. When are you got to, folks, going to make up your mind? This is Foot Floppy News Network, FNN, FFNN, Foot Floppy News Network. Yeah, so, um, yeah, a lot of stuff's going on, even with that whole Vault 7 thing. I know I did one, I did a show on that a while back with the CIA. So, I'm um, just, uh... I'm thinking about doing a, a short segment, a short episode, I would say. And we're just going to start off here with, from Activist Post by Carrie Wilder. Wilder. There's going to be a few I'm going to be talking about. It's mostly domestic. It says here, whistleblowers versus the state. And it's raised here. Immediately after WikiLeaks released thousands of documents revealing the extent of CIA surveillance and hacking practices. The government was calling for an investigation, not into why the CIA has amassed so much power, but rather into who exposed their invasive policies. A federal criminal investigation is being opened into WikiLeaks publication of documents detailing alleged CIA hacking operations. Several U.S. officials reportedly told CNN, according to USA Today, the inquiry, the official said, will seek to determine whether the disclosure represented a breach from the outside or a leak from the inside of the organization. Ah, outside or inside job, you decide. A separate review will attempt to assess the damage caused by such disclosure, the official said. Even Democratic Representative Ted Liu, who has been urging whistleblowers to come forward to expose wrongdoing within the Trump administration, has turned his focus away from what the documents expose and toward determining how could it have possibly happened. Yeah, but if you, if you uh, were going to blow the whistle on Obama, he goes, yeah, come on in. We'll just throw your ass in jail after you admit yourself who you are. All the drama continues, right, folks? Yeah, absolutely. Politics as usual. I am deeply disturbed by the allegation that the CIA lost its arsenal of hacking tools, he said, while calling for an investigation. The ramifications could be devastating. I'm calling for an immediate congressional investigation. We need to know if the CIA lost control of its hacking tools, who 
may have those tools and how do we now protect the privacy of America? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, wow, man. Let's get Big Brother to protect our privacy. It's like putting a fox a garden in a hen house, right? That's like a typical traditional phrase. What good grief? He thinks that he thinks, uh, he thinks that, that damn stupid. According to Liel's statement. The problem isn't necessarily that the CIA spied on Americans and invaded innocent people's technology without consent. It is that the CIA mishandled their spying tools and in doing so endangered Americans' privacy by exposing to the presum- presumably bad actors. <laughs> it's like flip flop, flip flop. It's like, ha, oh, I got the Mitt Romney syndrome too, you know? I'm a flip- I have a flip flopping fetish. The, pro- the problem isn't the corrupt agency violating basic privacy rights, but they that they weren't skillful enough to keep their corruption under wraps. So goes the familiar whistleblower narrative in the United States. Whistleblowers stepped forward to expose wrongdoing on the part of the government, something the government claimed to support and immediately establish institutions. And the media bend the conversation away from the wrongdoing in order to focus on the unlawful release of secrets. Putting aside the facts that, according to popular American mythology, breaking a law is a patriotic duty. The government and politicians' reactions are both hypocritical and habitual. Thank you very much. When Chelsea Manning revealed damning evidence of U.S. war crimes in Iraq, including soldiers directly targeting Reuters news staff. The response was not to investigate who allowed those crimes. In fact, a later Pentagon manual went on to describe instances in which it is permissible to kill journalists. That version was later retracted after outcry from reporters. Rather, Manny was a subject to a military tribunal and issued multiple life sentences, a cruel and unusual punishment reversed only in President Obama's last days in office and his attempt to salvage his abysmal human rights, transparency, and whistleblower record. I have to agree on that because he wants to make him look pristine. Yes, I can. I'm a scumbag, piece of garbage, bend over Bob to the New World Order, but you love me because of my kind eyes and pathetic, distinguished smile. Now we'll go on here. Whenever someone revealed the extent of the NSA's warrantless mass surveillance of American citizens and millions of others around the world, the government's response was not to investigate why those programs existed in the first place. Rather, they thrashed and flailed around the world, ordering the plane of Bolivian President Evo Morales to be grounded in the hopes of catching a whistleblower. Congress later passed a deceptive USA Freedom Act, which codified continued surveillance. Of course, we call Patriot Act light. Unfreedom Act, that is. It should be the USA Tyrannical Act. You know, come on, let's be honest, you bunch of clowns. The Edward Center remains in exile and establishment politicians repeatedly call him a traitor for exposing the crimes of his government. Some, including Trump CIA director Mike Pompeo, have called for his execution. Mass surveillance continue. And the president himself is seeking to retain those powers as he condemns former President Obama for allegedly spying on him. And so on and so forth. The same true was John Caraco, Thomas Drake, William Benny, and Jeffrey Sterling. The government is exposed is exposed for wrongdoing rather than prove themselves to be representative of the people by remedying remedying the those transgressions, they point fingers and divert while the, all the while refusing to relinquish the unjust power any given agency is exposed for having. Many people are already aware that the government does little to actually serve them. Americans trust in political leaders and government in general is an abysmal low, which I find that very good because you never trust them, period. Rather, government agents and agencies operate to advance and concrete their own interests and power. This is why penalties against killing government employees 
are more stringent than killing civilians because they're so special. Confoundedly special. Yeah, the glam, glam, glamour boys and glamour girls. Glam, glam post, right? Exactly. Glam, so, glam post got glam post. It is why stealing from the government is perceived as more outrageous to the state than stealing from a civilian. The government considers crimes committed against itself to carry the utmost offense, yet often fails to deliver justice to the people who provide their financial foundation. As a result, the state does not even try to show remorse for violative policies, even when they are exposed and splattered across social media for the world to see. Instead, with help of corporate media, the debate is shifted to whether or not WikiLeaks is a criminal organization or whether or not Eric Snowden is a traitor. As White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer said of the leaks, this is the kind of disclosure that undermines the country, our security. This alleged leak should concern every American for its impact on national security. Anybody who leaks classified information will be held accountable to the maximum extent of the law. Meanwhile, we're supposed to accept the government's investigation of itself, which, surprise, usually finds little or wrongdoing on their own behalf and often consolidates and extends the very same power whistleblowers exposed in the first place. Oh, of course. You know how that goes. If you do it, if we do it, that's okay. If you do it, throw the book at them. That's the tyrannical way, my friends. Nothing new at all. I'm not surprised. I'm not offended. It's going to laugh at these butt wipes. Uncle Tom's and Angel Mama's to the state. And, of course, they want to go after WikiLeaks now. Let's go crucify them in the name of our country. Yeah, even though we like to be corrupt, we're doing it for patriotism and security for the American people, even though we're watching those sons of bitches. That's what they want you to assume, want you to say, want you to think that we'll take care of you. We are underdog, and you are sweet pie purebred that can't fend for herself. So this is how you have to look at it and always got to watch what these vultures elements in government can do to any of us. A lot of doublespeak. Two-faced cowards. So we're going to continue on here on reference to Ricky Leaks. When Vice President Pence uh, addressed yesterday in the Hill.com. Which you know, I read, I check them out once in a while. They're not a diehard conservative uh, website, but you know what? Not saying it doesn't mean they're always wrong. And they do follow me on Twitter, which is pretty cool. So uh, this is it's here. Pence, U.S. will use the force of law of the law on WikiLeaks if CIA leak legit. This is by Mark Pence, Vice President Pence on Thursday vowed that the Trump administration would would use the full force of the law to go after those involved in WikiLeaks' latest document dump. If the materials it released are shown to be valid each CIA documents. Trafficking in national security information, as this alleged WikiLeaks has down here, is a very serious offense. Pence said during an interview on Fox News' special report, it represents a compromise of the security of the American people, he said. The president and his administration will take that very seriously and will use the full force of the law and resources of the United States to hold all of those to account that were involved, he added. If proven to be true and confirmed publicly, I can assure you that no resource will be spared in holding those to account that have leaked information that could will constitute Forgot about that. A compromise of methods and a compromise of national security. Republican Senator Ben Sass from Nebraska pressed Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions, Dem, used new tactics. Oops, that's the wrong thing. That's boop, boop, boop. Uh, hold on here. Sorry about that. I'll keep going here. Use new tactic to get Trump's tax return. Sessions won't rule out special prosecutor for Obama Justice Department. What Trump has accomplished in his first days or more. 
in a letter earlier Thursday on what a Trump administration would prosecute WikiLeaks. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. Founder Julian Assange, after the White House referred questions to him. The Department of Justice believes Julian Assange has broken the law and is the department aggressively pursuing his detention and prosecution. SAS S. Sessions, released on Thursday, on Tuesday, released a massive trove of documents that it claims details the CIA's hacking and surveillance program. The cache, cache con contained descriptions of hacking tools, engineering notes, internal communications, and the react redacted names of agents. Since WikiLeaks said the leak was the first of many, it has come coming that will deal with the CIA and its operations. The C FBI and CIA announced Wednesday that they will collaborate on a joint probe of the documents released focusing on how WikiLeaks obtained the material and whether they came from an un from an employee or contractor. The CIA has insisted it never engaged in illegal, unconstitutional, or unethical behavior detail in the documents, which it declined to validate as authentic. It's, it is the CIA's job to innovate, cutting edge, and the first line of defense in protecting this country from enemies abroad. It said in a statement, America deserves nothing less. The American public should be deeply troubled by any WikiLeaks disclosure designed to damage the intelligence community ability to protect Americans ter against terrorists and other adversaries. Oh, I'll make that more simpler. Hey, other adversaries, have a militia, and you know what? Stop, stop, you know, say stop being a damn empire, okay? So please, up yours. Assange says there's, um, there's, um, there's a, his organization will also give technology companies access to hacking tools. He had decided to work with them, he said, during an online press conference to give him some exclusive access to some of the technical details we have so that the fixes can be pushed out. The CIA has lost control of its entire cyber weapons arsenal. This is a historic act of devastating incompetence to have created such an arsenal and store it all in one place and not secure it. Well, it's a thing called blowback, my friends. CIA terminology. It just backfired in their faces. Time and time again, what will this entity, illegal entity, understand? You are part of the problem, not the solution. You know, I'm going to say the CIA has everyone there is bad? Absolutely not. William claims it was started by um, post Nazis, so um, something to look, something that's just a claim. But one thing I know for sure some folks, they're not too crazy about them, you know what I'm saying? So um, we have to like really see that as well. And um, it just really you know, it just boggles the mind. This war on the war on journalism, my friends. This is how you gotta look at it. There's no have there's no right to health care. Of course there's no confounded right. And um, this came out yesterday. I'm gonna add this to the memo right now. Cause remember one thing for sure. So let's check this out. Yeah, it says here, don't forget JFK's fight with the CIA by Jacob G. Hornberger. It's from Warren Paul Liberty Report, but it was um, actually uh, it was, uh, documented on 2016 by the Freedom Frontier Foundation. Yeah, something like that. But um, it says here, weighing in, the, weighing in against President-elect Donald Trump and his disagreement with the CIA over alleged Russian meddling. In the U.S. presidential election, the Wall Street Journal's Jane Harris writes Donald Trump has picked a fight with the Central Intelligence Agency over the Russian hacking of American elections, an unprecedented move for an incoming president. The, the likely that Harris employed, employed the term incoming is that it enables him to avoid addressing the big elephant in the room. President Kennedy is in his fight. 
actually his war against not only the CIA, but another major component of the national security state, the military establishment. Kennedy came into the office as a standard Cold Warrior. That is, like most Americans in the 1950s and 60s, he had brought into the notion that had been inculcated, inculcated into the American people since the end of World War II, that America's wartime partners and ally, the Soviet Union, an example of Russia, was coming to get us and the subject to the American people to communism. The, I mean, the American people to communism. Sorry about that. To combat what was built as an international communist conspiracy based in Moscow, Americans are told it would be necessary to adopt the same type of governmental structure that existed in Russia. A national security apparatus grafted onto America's original limited government structure that had been established by the Constitution. The apparatus included a giant, permanent, and ever-growing military establishment, or what President Eisenhower would later call the military-industrial complex. It also consisted of a secretive agency called the CIA, which would come to yield wield omnipotent powers within what continued to be billed as a limited government. Such powers would include assassination, regime change operations, foreign crews, kidnapping, torture, redition, involuntary ex medical experimentation, or e.g. MBK Ultra, spying and surveillance of Americans, the type of things that would characterize the KGB and even Hitler's Gestapo. Candy believed in this apparatus, even though it had been adapted without a constitutional amendment, he believed it was necessary to keep America free and safe from dread, who it was said were coming to get us. He experienced this first dose of reality a few months after being sworn to office when the CIA presented its secret plan to invade Cuba and effect regime change there. The plan called for using CIA trained Cuban exiles to do the invading, with the U.S. government denying any role in the operation. Kennedy's job under the CIA plan would be to lie about the U.S. involvement in the invasion by making him America's liar in chief and directly subjecting to him to black to blackmail by the CIA. The CIA ensured Kennedy that the invasion could succeed without U.S. air support, and JFK, and JFK made it clear that no air support would be f furnished. The CIA lied. In fact, they knew there that there was no way that the operation could succeed without support, air support, but they figured that once the invasion got underway, Kennedy would have no effective choice but to change his mind and provide the needed air support. It was a classic CIA setup of a newly elected president. When the invasion start, started to fail, the CIA urged the president to change his mind. He refused to do so, and the invasion force was easily defeated. The CIA considered Kennedy's actions to be a grave betrayal of the America that's in his Cuban freedom fighters. Kennedy publicly took responsibility for the debacle, but privately he was outraged. He knew that the CIA had, had set him up with the aim of maneuvering him into intervening with air support. He fired the much revered and much respected CIA director Alan Dulles, who, in a classic conflict of interest, would later be appointed to the Warren Commission. Reflecting his disdain for the CIA, Kennedy promised to, this, to splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds. Over time, Kennedy's animus extended to the military industrial complex, the gold, Cold War apparatus that Eisenhower had said posed a great threat to the freedom and democratic processes of the American people when the Joint Chiefs of the Staff suggested that the United States should initiate a surprise nuclear attack on the Soviet Union. Kennedy left the meeting and indignantly remarked to an aide, and we call ourselves the human race. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the military establishment exhorted Kennedy to bomb and invade Cuba, which it would be later discovered would have almost certainty resulted in the all-out nuclear war, given that Soviet military commanders on the ground have been giving battlefield authority to use nuclear weapons to defend themselves. To resolve the crisis, Kennedy promised the Soviets that the United States would not invade Cuba again. He also secretly vowed to remove U.S. nuclear missiles, which were pointed at the Soviet Union and Turkey. Not surprisingly, the military establishment was livid. One of the generals called the settlement the worst defeat in America's history. The man they viewed as a neophyte, a competent president, had agreed to leave the communist regime in Cuba intact, which to the national security establishment meant that America was in grave danger of failing to the communists. That was, a, 
the worst of it. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy changed directions completely. Recognizing Cold War for the for the nonsense it was, Kennedy decided to end it and have and to have the United States and Soviet Union live in peaceful coexistence. He announced the change at as his at his now famous peace speech at American University, which he prepared without consulting with or advising the national security establishment. He also entered a nuclear test ban treaty with the Soviets over the vehement objections of the military. He also began ordered a withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. Worst of all, from the standpoint of the Pentagon and the CIA, Kennedy entered into secret personal negotiations with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev and Cuban leader Fidel Castro to end the Cold War. In other words, by the time he was assassinated, Kennedy was at full war against the U.S. national security establishment. He was challenging all other Cold War assumptions. He was proposing peaceful coexistence with that the CIA and the military had said was an implacable foe that was determined to take over America. And he was doing the unthinkable, making friends with the Soviet Union and Cuba and the communist world. In the process, he was threatening the existence of the entire national security establishment, the contractors, the subcontractors, the generals, and other officers, the weapons producers, all the people who are in the warfare state lag largest. Without the Cold War about against the Soviet Union, Americans would have undoubtedly asked in the 1960s, what do we need a Cold War apparatus for there, there is no Cold War? But his assassination... Kennedy lost the war and the national security establishment prevailed. They got the continuation of the Cold War, they got their Vietnam War, they got their continued regime change operations against Cuba. They got an ever begoing warfare state, which continues to this day, notwithstanding the fact that the Cold War ended decades ago. And of course, they got their continued Cold War animus against Russia. Ironically, we now have a president-elect who seems to have much the same critical mindset toward the CIA as Kennedy did when he was president. So you have to, the interesting thing, it's possible, but I'm not saying it's 100% guaranteed. All right, on it. However, this is a real interesting, like we may see history repeating itself. If so, you got to still support the president in those areas. Doesn't mean you got to be his lord, uh, you got to not lord, so be lovey-dovey. All right. Plus, you got, that's why a lot of people be going after him in those areas. I love pe- petty things, phantom things, phantom stuff. But um, yeah, Jacob Hollenberg is very, a very good, a very good writer. And this is why I always tell folks: you gotta stop being an empire. Now, more stuff, more information is coming out of the CIA. Um, declassified information, and I say, let's. Bury him. Rest in peace. Have an intelligence agents, but not a global entity. Okay? So, um, sorry about that. And I'll do one more thing here. This came from, it came out yesterday from independent.uk. .co.uk says here, Donald Trump approves selling weapons to Saudi Arabia blocked by Obama. Huh? Like, it's like flip-flopping here. It don't make any sense. Uh, Samuel Osborne. State Department has approved resuming arms sales to Saudi Arabia, previously blocked by Barack Obama. A multi million dollar technology for Rudai was blocked by the former president during his final month of his administration over his human rights concerns. Saudi Arabia is leading the mostly Arab coalition targeting health of rebels in Yemen with airstrikes. Annual report by UN experts who monitor the conflict in Yemen said by Roy, seen by Reuters that the U.S. The Saudi-led coalition had carried out attacks that may amount to war crimes accusations for this rejects. Saudi Foreign Minister Donald Trump is a friend of everybody. By approving the measure, Senator of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson may have given the indication the Trump administration will see closer ties with Saudi Arabia in the Yemen war. Officials say the deal will need White House approval to go into effect last year. Obama's Obama administration sorry about that. Approved a 
1.5 billion dollar you know 1.15 billion dollar deal for the sale of tanks and armored vehicles to Saudi Arabia. The deal was opposed by more than 60 members of the House of Representatives who signed a letter calling for Mr. Obama to delay. However, in his final months of office, Obama decided to halt the current deal and provision guided military technology. Controversial orders Donald Trump has already issued. Yemen has been defied by nearly two years of civil war that pits the Iran allied housing group against the Western backed coalition led by Saudi Arabia. At least 10,000 people have been killed in the fighting that has unleashed a humanitarian crisis on the impoverished nation, country. If the White House agrees with the State Department's position, the administration will notify Congress about the intense sale where it could encounter a resist a resistance. I say, piss on these guys. Don't give them anything. Drop it. Because one thing I know for sure, Saudi Arabia is... Um, not a real freedom-loving nation. Human rights over there is uh, pretty sacrilege. And a lot of us have been following Yemen. We're going to Yemen. Very disturbing. They need to be stopped. And they need to be taken care of. Rebuilt. So, people and people, people should be informed on this. And, um... Make this happen, okay? So turn it down. Don't even um, support this. All right? Well, that is really it. This is going to be a short short episode. So uh, thanks for everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to send me something that's interesting you may want to check out, whatever you do, please feel free to correspond with me through the quorum. What the quorum? Ramble that twice. Hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Breaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Scene.life, or Minds.com. In addition, you can email me at LokiLuck3 at gmail.com. All right, my friends. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time. Take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love and may your guardian spirits be with you.